Yes, you are listening to Blue Please here on Wow Radio with myself, Tall Biscuit. Yes, indeed. We've been doing the TBC retrospective. We've been looking at various aspects of the Burning Crusade and why it was maligned. We're still trying to work this out, actually. I'm going to read out a few more emails, see if we can find anyone that doesn't like TBC. Right, here's one. It's from Chris Pappas. He says this. What's up, TB? I really like Vanilla WoW and TBC. I'm all about rating. AQ40 and Naxx were amazing back then. BT and Sunwell were also really amazing. I don't really pay much attention to professions, but they seem more useful in TBC because the tailoring set would be better than most of the stuff you get from SSC and TK. But overall, TBC was better, in my opinion. Progressing in Sunwell was very fun, and I wish that Wrath would do something like that. Can I get a shout-out to Moment of Silence and Dalaran US? Yes, you may. Sneaking it in there. Yeah. Evil, evil. What else have we got? A nice little breakdown here. I want to read it out just because it's it's a pretty cool breakdown before we go into the segment about the next expansion and what we must hope that Blizzard will learn from this experience. And it says, Hey, TV, this is Daystar from uh, Twisting Nether. I have experienced everything in TBC as a druid and most of it as a rogue as well. Here are my opinions. Questing was quite boring. Areas were crowded at the start and even a month after release due to the vast number of paladins. However, it was a good thing that zones were able to last you two to three levels unlike pre-TBC. Yeah, I would agree with that. That's fine. I like the fact that they put in two starting zones. That was a very, very smart idea with Northrend content. Very good. I also got to in- avoid boring tundra. It's like, nothing boring about boring. Who are you trying to fool? I'll stick with Howling Fjord and the Vikings and pirates and ninjas. Oh, my. Oh, yes. That's where I wanted to be, and I enjoyed it very much. Gear. Gear was horrible at first when blues were better than Karazhan Epics, or Karazhan Epics were doing better than SSC slash GK Epics. Also, the meaning of Epic died since TBC when it was thrown on people instead of making them work for it, not to mention the horrible stat distribution on the tier sets and various other items. Also, the death of the 8 piece sets made me sad. Eh, I understand why people didn't like the death of the 8 piece sets. I, can, I, can, I totally get it. I think it was pretty cool to actually have to choose between getting a set and getting non-tiered items which were generally statted better but lacked the set bonus. I think that was a nice choice to have to make. Now, as regards to gear being horrible at first, well, it was all over the place a little bit. It was overpowered. And yes, there were some Karazhan epics that were better than SSC TK, but there weren't many by any stretch of the imagination. There was a few examples. I mean, we've got stuff like, say, the those trial fire trousers which were better than the pants of the astromancer i always felt that they the pants of the astromancer were just badly itemized indeed at that time there was spell damage and healing spell damage wasn't the same they changed that later on now of course the pants of the astromancer would be come a very useful kind of healing item or i suppose druids could probably wear them because they had a lot of spirit on them but they were badly itemized versus the trial fire trousers so most people didn't even go for them I, I totally get that. Now, crafting. Crafting in TBC was fairly good. It had a meaning. Why would someone choose a certain profession? While well, casters were tailors, warriors, rep paladins were blacksmithing, Jason was good for all classes, and healers loved alchemy. However, sometimes it was a must for a certain class to pick a certain profession, because otherwise they would fall behind on gear and thus on damage. I must also say that money making from professions was great. All professions were good for profit. Uh, no, they weren't. <laughs> they, they really weren't. I'm trying to remember any time when I actually made money from tailoring. Uh, let's see. <laughs> no, it never actually happened. No, I never made money from tailoring in TBC, and I barely made any money from enchanting either. The enchants in TBC, certainly early on, were pretty nice, but again, it's uh, for the same problem that Wrath has. Thankfully, later on, there were some rarer enchants, none of which I actually managed to get. Well, not most of them, anyway. But... No, I wouldn't say that it was better as a moneymaker by any stretch. I would say that it was certainly more useful, sometimes too much in the case of, like, Spellfire. But certainly more useful than it is with Wrath. Now, raiding, here's the big bit. He says this. Raiding in TBC was sort of weird. The progress depended on gearing up from a 10-man to be able to progress in 25 mans. It's sort of weird as well to think that you previously had a 40-man guild and then you had to turn it into a 25-man guild. You had to either drop some people Divide up to three groups for Karazhan, or recruit some more, which caused some drama. Then there were achievements. Some of them were brutal, like TK and Black Temple. Yes, they were hard. 
Not going to dispute that. And some of them were fairly okay, like SSC slash Hygel. However, it made recruiting sort of hard sometimes if you had it. If you were on Hygel slash BT and you recruited someone without the attunement, you had to do SSC and TK for them to attune them. That made people who had already done SSC TK to death very depressed to go back, and it made like you were carrying the new recruits. What made it worse is how such recruits might be a complete failure, thus after dropping them and getting new ones, and then having to do it all over again. Then about the difficulty, I'd say it was great. It was very hard at the start, when the, then with the release of BT slash Hygel, things got a little bit easier. And then over time, it got easier and easier. Then Sunwell was released for the extremely hardcore, like me, which I enjoyed a lot. Then came the 30% nerf for new talents that made everything a walk in the park, and allowed lots of Black Temple raiding guilds to clear Sunwell within a week. Which was good, because other people deserve to see the content, provided they are not total retards. Yeah, the... End of, you know, I call it the end of expansion bonanza. That it's like <coughs> you can all go see it now. Hey, unfortunately, they seem to have carried that on into wrath, they seem to have forgot to turn it off. Oh dear, anyway. He says this, about the reward for raiding, I'd say it was great gear that only works on PvE servers and raids. It was impossible for me to quest or grind with PvE gear because it meant instant death for another faction. Well, yes, I suppose if you're on a PvP server. Questing was mostly done for me with PvP gear. <coughs> oh dear, I, I'm catching a cold, it's terrible. Add to this, that the PvP gear had the same looks as PvE gear, it made everyone look the same. Well, in comparison to Wrath, I don't see that as being a big deal, because everyone looks the same now. Everyone's got the same tiered gear, and all of the leveling gear and blues have the same models, so everyone looks the same. At least they don't look like Skittles troll, but they still look the same. The time it takes for raids and progress, he says, was also great. Some bosses required certain gear, which was obtained over time. And apparently he hated the PvP because arenas suck. Yeah, that's uh, quite a nice summary, really, in my opinion. It's not too bad. I agree with most of what's said there. Admittedly, not all of it. I certainly think the TBC raiding was very strong. There were some issues with itemization. And the progression was perhaps a little bit too linear, and I don't agree with attunements. But... It was solid content, it was enjoyable content, and it was meaty. It took a while. Always got to have something ahead of you. Always. Must always have a goal. Preferably something that involves killing something very big with a lot of your friends. I'm sorry, but to me, grinding 27,000 gold for a mammoth is not really the most exciting or epic goal in the world. Yes, I did just say... Epic! Mm, indeed. Now, let's have a little bit of a think. Bearing in mind all that we've just talked about, and bearing in mind the rather glaring flaws with Wrath, what should Blizzard learn from both the TBC and from Wrath of the Lich King going forward? Well, my opinion is this. I think what Blizzard have to realise is that accessibility and difficulty can be independent attributes. Giving someone the opportunity to do something does not mean that you should give them the opportunity to walk all over it, or as the new term that's come out seems to describe, face roll over it. Indeed, what tends to happen is that those who wish they could get into raiding finally do, and they are disappointed by the experience. They heard tales. They heard grand legends of guilds full of poop suckers spending days and days and days and days and weeks and years in raid instances to beat these epic encounters that were so hard that no one else could do them. And then they finally get to do it themselves and they realise, oh, actually, the, this is all really easy. And that's not a fair representation of raiding in WoW. In my opinion, Blizzard should be looking at raiding as one of their crowning glories. They made raiding accessible for a good number of people. Whereas raiding in other MMOs was for the tiniest minority. And I do mean tiniest. The idea of another game, for instance, I mean, let's, we'll, you know, just have a look at the WoW Jutsu numbers before the 30% nerf. We had 4.5 million players who had killed at least one boss in a raid instance in TBC. That, you know, that's about, at the time, about 40%. Having 40% of people do a raid boss in other MMOs was unthinkable. They were for the hardcore elite. And yes, some of the instances, Sunwell particularly and Nax 40, yes, they were for the best of the best. But the point is there was plenty of raiding content for other people. And the progression was linear and obvious. And it worked. Now, removing the attunements was a good step forward. 
I would agree with it. I campaigned for it. I absolutely agree with it, and I still agree with it. But the difficulty has to be sorted out. Now, this is something that they seem to be doing with Old War. They are making many grand promises about Old War, and I must say that they're going for broke when it comes to Old War. Either it's going to suck horribly, and if that's the case, you're going to hemorrhage players to other games. At least the ones that want to raid content are something more challenging. Or it's going to be a triumph, and it will bring people back into the fold, and we'll forget all of the silliness that's been occurring over the past few months. Now, I would imagine, and certainly hope, that the latter will happen, because, no, I don't really want to quit WoW at all. I'd actually like to play and enjoy it. But enjoying Wrath content at this point is impossible for me. Now, the idea of being all things to all men is something that I don't really like, but when it comes to raiding, they have the opportunity to be most things to most men. And that's okay. You've got 10 slash 25 man versions, and I'm okay with that change. I have no problems with that. However, there are two ways to approach 10 slash 25 man, the segregation between the two. Either you can make them the same difficulty, you know, which involves quite a bit of delicate balancing work. You can make it as difficult for a 10 man as it is difficult for a 25. Now, what that does, of course, is it provides challenge for both 10 and 25 man raiding guilds. Yet, it allows those with access to less people, or perhaps who can't schedule 24 other people to turn up at a specific time, to do the content. Alternatively, you could view 10 as the easy version, and 25 as the hard version. Those are two ways that you could do it, but right now, the problem is they seem to be mixing them up a little bit too much. They need to come down on one or the other. Which will it be? Personally, I prefer the former. I really would. Nothing wrong with that. Make it all difficult. Make it all challenging. Now, what they're going to combine in Old War with that is the whole idea of hard modes. Introduced with Sartharian, of course, and it was in previous encounters, particularly Vemkri and Yaj. It gives the opportunity for better guilds to gain more loot and take on a higher challenge, and they can choose to do that. That is something they have to push forward with. The next few instances in this game have to have that and the hard modes have to be hard the challenges have got to be there the goals have got to be there otherwise raiding guilds stagnate the world firsts have got to be there the world firsts have got to come back nobody cares about everything else you know i mean we had world first within three days when sartharian three drakes kill finally came nobody cared there was no hoo-ha there was no celebration there was no big zomg the poop suckers it just didn't happen. We need to see that back. It invigorates the community. It allows them to rally around a group of players and either deride them for it or celebrate their success. It provides for competition. It provides for drive for guilds. That is important. And of course with the achievement system there, there is a permanent record of who gets what and when. And special titles and rewards can be given out to those who pull it off first. Which is fine by me. That's a good use of the achievement system. The questing system in Wrath is great. And I have no complaints over that. Phasing needs to be used more. I must say. It's a good mechanic. It needs to be used way more. Not only in Wrath. But in future expansions. And what they have to really have a look at. Is the way that professions integrate into the game. Whether or not. You know what they really want to do with them. Because they seem to be at a bit of a loss. They're getting there. They seem to have realized that, yes, you have to take the two aspects of professions. The idea of selling and the idea of improving oneself. You have to be able to do both, perhaps in equal measure. They should have a look at how they did it with TBC. Particularly when it came to the idea of improving oneself. Yes, there are improvements to be had. Absolutely. There are upgrades to be had in Wrath. But they're... They were upgrades as opposed to pieces of gear that were actually desirable and BOP. That's the that's the shift that's been made. Now, in my opinion, both should be in there. There should there shouldn't have been a shift. It's like, right, okay, there's some great BOP gear here. Maybe a bit overpowered, might nerf down slightly. Let's add these. Let's add these unique upgrades that you could also have as a profession. And then they need to look back all the way to Classic WoW and through some of TBC and look at the idea of rare items. Items that are difficult to craft, recipes that are difficult to acquire. 
to give crafters a market to push forward with. It's going to be a tough couple of years, I think, to be honest. I think WoW is going to come up against some real stiff competition. And, of course, it's got a player base that is feeling very, very disillusioned right now. We're hoping, of course, that Old WoW will fix that. I certainly hope. And I do wish Blizzard every success with that. But just remember, telling people that they're looking through rose-tinted spectacles when they look back at your previous content is not only an insult to the people who worked on it, but it's an insult to the intelligence of those who look back and remember those times accurately and objectively. You have to always look back. See where you've been to know where you are. And that's how you improve, and that's how you build on your success. My name is Total Biscuit, and you're listening to Blue Please here on WoW Radio. I'll be right back after some synergy with Passage to the Fourth World. Enjoy.